Okay, let's solve an example. And here's the example reads. A one-fifth scale of a vehicle is to be tested in two tunnels. One in a wind tunnel, one in a water tunnel. Okay, I'll explain at the end of the question why we may need water tunnel. Determine the maximum velocity of water and air in the tunnels if the maximum speed of the prototype is 120 mile per hour. Okay, first of all, 120 mile per hour is very fast, as you may know. It is 176 feet per second. Okay, but I don't have to convert this if the final answer of the velocities of wind and air is in mile per hour. I don't have to make any conversion to feet per second. Okay. All right, so in this type of questions, you can see that I didn't give you what is the velocity function of, right? That information was not supplied to you. However, I have a video called Common Non-Dimensional or Dimensionless Numbers video. And over there, I talked about a particular parameter called Reynolds number, okay, Reynolds number. And I said that this Reynolds number has significant input into the these type of tests, whether it's a vehicle or a ship or other kind of aerodynamic tests, okay? And in real life, actually the viscous forces are the predominating forces, okay? And in order to supply the dynamic similitude, I must have Reynolds number similarity. Okay, let's write our Reynolds number now. The Reynolds number will be rho v l over nu. If you remember, we have established kinematic viscosity, which is obtained by dividing by the absolute viscosity divided by the density. Okay, so I, I wanna, you can solve the question by leaving with the absolute viscosity and density, but it will be faster if I do with the kinematic viscosity. So I'm gonna plug that over there, and I will obtain my Reynolds number as V times some kind of an L divided by the kinematic viscosity. Okay, for the model and the prototype, these Reynolds number must be the same. Reynolds number of the model must be equal to Reynolds number of the prototype. So if I write it for the model and the prototype for two cases, um, I'll, I'll first start with the air one. Okay, let's do it with the air. And you will see that velocity of model times length of model divided by kinematic viscosity of model will be equal to velocity of the prototype, L of the prototype divided by the kinematic viscosity of the prototype. So if I rearrange this, the goal is to have V model, right? So I will have this kind of a relationship. V, Vm will be equal to Vp times, I prefer to write these equations like this, Lp divided by Lm. Do you see where it's coming from? Kinematic viscosity M divided by kinematic viscosity of P. So I wanna write this like this because Typically in this approach, when I have a, some kind of a scale, this is what it will be. So this is the scale, right, LP. And remember that prototype is larger, so mathematically LP over LM should be greater than 1. So I'm going to call this 5. Sometimes I see these issues where students call it 1 fifth, but then the model becomes larger. Okay, but in this case, that's not really quite realistic. Okay, and if I want to go ahead and write uh, kinematic viscosity model divided by kinematic viscosity of the prototype, if I'm using the air, both of it in air, right? So then this will be one. Does it make sense? This will be one because I'm doing both the tests in air in same similar temperature, similar pressure, so my viscosity is, well, will be similar. And as my VP is 120 mile per hour, right? I will get my VM to be 600 mile per hour. So if I'm testing this in a wind tunnel, I have to obtain wind speed of 600 miles per hour. Okay? All right, let's go back and reassess the same situation for the water case. Okay? So the Reynolds number of the model will still be equal to Reynolds number of the prototype, right? And if I write this, I'm going to get the same equation. The model velocity will be equal to prototype velocity times LP divided by LM times kinematic viscosity model divided by the kinematic viscosity of the prototype. Okay. Now, LM over LP is the same, right? It's fifth. This is the scale, so it's not going to change whether I have a 
liquid or a gas in my wind tunnel, right? But the last term, which is the kinematic viscosity, ratio will change. Okay. okay, let's insert the values for the kinematic viscosity of the model, which is the water, as you know, and insert the kinematic viscosity for the prototype, which is air, as you know, right? So the kinematic viscosity of water will be 1.21 times 10 to the minus 5 feet square per second, okay? While the kinematic viscosity of air will be 1.57 times 10 to the minus 4 feet square per second. If you punch these numbers into your calculator and you're going to find your Vm is equal to 46.2 mile per hour. Okay. So now you can see if I use water tunnel I obtain 46 mile per hour. If I use wind tunnel I get 600 mile per hour. Okay. Obviously you know to be uh, fair 42 46.2 mile per hour it's fairly high velocity for a um, water tunnel as well, okay? Uh, it's worth noting that this gives you some options.